There's a couple other really neat advantages here, and I think you'll find also with the stable coins, and it really has to do with the inefficient inefficiencies in the markets. But you can actually generate a pretty good yield right now. Mm. And so right now with USDC and other stable coins, you're generating anywhere between eight to 11% annual yield on your cash. Holy moly. Money could be complicated. Let a nerd help you. We're here to demystify the complex nature of money by getting you answers from financial nerds and whiz kids. Welcome to Ask the Money Nerds, a weekly segment of the Wealth Labs podcast where we answer your most pressing money questions. Cryptocurrency, blockchain, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, you name it, we just hear about this stuff all the time and it had a meteoric rise when there was all the guilt and shaming of how could you not be in this back in the day and we saw it go up, we saw it come down and it's come back up. So is it here to stay? What is it? What things should you be looking at? And it's cryptocurrency. So currency is really like exchange. I mean, currency could be, we have speaker wire, right? And then current can flow through that. So how do we exchange with one another? That's through currency. And we've gone from everything from bartering. Hey, I got six chickens. Can I have that pig to, you know, then we went into, you know, actually probably like a store where you could kind of barter a little bit better Then eventually we came up with these paper and then you had little dead presidents on it. And no, I'm not talking about Biden in 2021. I'm talking about like, yeah, well, and then Benjamin Franklin wasn't really a president either. That one got you, huh? I mean, he, he just looks a little old. That's all I'm saying. And, uh, and now we've got this whole thing where you've got credit cards. Remember checks? How stupid, like checks just feel stupid. Like you write on this piece of paper. They do feel old school, but they're so fun to write. Really? I think- Not ben, now, but when you were younger, you're like, oh, I can't wait to write my own check. How about Venmo? Like you're, you're, you have social media, like here's what I'm spending my money on. <laughs> like for me, it just makes me want to write the most ridiculous things every time I pay someone. I know. You know, yeah. but, but what we're really talking about here is cryptocurrency. We're talking about mm -hmm. blockchain. We're talking about different methodologies there. And you know, at one time I had Logan Sunday in my life and he goes, all right, here's what it is. I'm like, all right, let's go ahead and do this. And uh, I didn't do the transaction, which uh, it would be worth a lot more, Stolba. It, it really was a little bit of a scarcity that I faced when I, mm -hmm. when I didn't decide to do it. Um, actually, I just kept having problems setting up the account and it just finally like, whatever. And then I just waited till it got really expensive. And then I was like, yeah, this is a good time to buy. <laughs> that was great. But Logan actually came and spoke at one of our events. Yes. And, and people just did so well listening to his advice. And, you know, so we stay in touch and I'm like, Hey, I'd love to, I'd love to personally ask questions of some transactions I want to do in this, in this world. And would love for him to talk about it, talk about some of his story. And what would you like to hear? <laughs> Oh, I want to, I, I figured we could start with the basics, you know, for people who are new to crypto, we can lay out the fundamentals and then we can get into, you know, deeper conversation around cryptocurrency. But it's one of those things, like I was telling you before we started recording, it is, it seems so simple to understand and it seems so complex at the same time. And so I feel like there are a lot of nuances. There's coins coming out all of the time. How do you know which one's trustworthy? How do you begin to invest in it? So there's there's lots around it. And I think your story at the beginning, Garrett, brought up a good point of there's, I feel even for myself, um, but there's a lot of FOMO around it. Like the fear of missing out on this opportunity that's going to like change my life and make me financially free. And then I'll be able to have everything that I want in my life. And I remember if I would have got in early when someone had talked to me about it, it was real early when you first heard about it. It right? was so early. How much like, was Bitcoin selling for at the time? It, I mean, dollars, like dollars. And you would have, like, uh, like you would have had to go buy it in a seedy parking lot somewhere. Yeah. I think at that time, <laughs> that, I say so that because early. I know Logan's done that. I've done that before, yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, I think about if I would have gotten in so much earlier, I could be right. sitting in so much, not cash, yeah. but you know, in currency, coin. I'd yeah, be currency. sitting in so it's, much currency. Right now. It's funny. I actually remember talking with Garrett about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I said, and I, and I always told myself the day that Garrett buys it is probably the day that I'm going to want to sell it because <laughs> the way that he kept putting it off <laughs> and putting it off. I'm just like, when he finally pulls the trigger, I think it's going to be you know, about the top and it almost mm -hmm. was. So congratulations. Yeah. No, I'm ahead. I'm ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just hold on to it long enough. It'll, it'll come One back. Day. That's what uh, <laughs> everyone wants to tell themselves. Right. Right. So, so, so talk about when you first bought, was Bitcoin your first purchase? Um, Bitcoin was my first purchase. Um, but it's funny when I, when I first heard about Bitcoin, I don't think it was a dollar when I remember, first heard about it, but I remember I was sitting in the back of a truck and I was, listening to something but then i i saw on the news or i heard on the news it was during the cyprus stuff like when yeah cyprus, when they just pulled money out of their they, accounts exactly when they were doing these bail-ins right and so 
all of a sudden on the news, they're talking about this cryptocurrency had shot up in value because of the Cyprus event, supposedly. And I kept thinking to myself, well, I know for sure that these news organizations are owned by private corporations, right? And why in the world would these private corporations be, be talking about something that's the equivalent of a penny stock, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? You know, penny stocks shoot up in value all the time and nobody, nobody cares, <laughs> right? So I kept telling myself, oh, something's going on here. Somebody's, somebody's trying to pump their bags is what I like to say. Someone's, yeah, yeah. Someone had a bag of Bitcoins and they wanted oh, to- Let's create this attention and, and this spike attention. this up. Happens a lot with gold and silver. Oh yeah. A lot yeah. with gold and silver, yeah. yeah. So in order to sell, I got to find some buyers, right? So I, and that's really kind of what sparked my interest in it. And so I was just like, you know what? I'm going to look into this Bitcoin and I found that uh, the only way I could buy it is I had to wire money to China. No, MoneyGram. MoneyGram. Uh, you know, that was that red phone thing, or I don't know, it was something. <laughs> I had to go to Walmart and send, it was $36 at the time, and I had to go to Walmart and MoneyGram the, the, the money to China. I had no China. idea. Walmart, <laughs> love it. Walmart. And you know, and I didn't do it. And it was $36 at the time, and it was like, nah, that's, that's just weird. You know, and I kind of forgot about it. But eventually Coinbase kind of came around and made it a little bit easier, made you feel a little bit better, and I finally started getting into it at that time. But mm -hmm. uh, but don't, uh, that, the fact that, again, I, I, I want to, I don't think it was accidentally introduced to the world in such a way. Right. right. I think somebody created the technology and they wanted to introduce it to the world. And, uh, and since then, there's been hundreds and thousands of different projects and coins. I think somebody wanted this to happen. Mm -hmm. Whether you believe in conspiracy theories or not, I don't know. <laughs> but it was, uh, I think somebody wanted it to happen and, and wanted to unload their bags. And they've done very well, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. on right. It. So, and and so are you in Bitcoin now? I am. I I would say I am in cryptocurrency. Right, but not that's not uh, the one that you're. But uh, it doesn't matter honestly right now which one you hold. Mm. Uh, so as far as price goes, I think it's important to understand that. Like, I mean, if you own Bitcoin now, you pretty much own everything else. I mean, if I own XRP, if I own Ether, I mean, they all pretty much follow each other. Mm -hmm. um, every once in a while, they'll separate in price, and one will go um, without the others following, but they all tend to divert right back to kind of what it was. So um, I don't know that there's any, um, nothing sticking out as a clear winner. They all just follow okay. each other. And what, it, what, like, how would you describe what cryptocurrency is to someone? Um, I, it's a technology, it's a public blockchain um, that has a native token on it that uh, allows me, if I own Bitcoin, I can transact on this public blockchain or I can put something on it. Where normally people have a clearing house through a bank right which is which is private the banks are controlling that mm -hmm. and this is now public where you can yeah. see the blockchain yeah and that's really the main innovation here is that we can see what's going on right, right? Mm -hmm. so i can't we can't you know if the government says they're going to do something we can't there's no public representation or, or way for us to see like that. how much did they put on a computer screen today right. mm -hmm. or yeah. not or how much yeah was it moved here and who got it who received it yeah i mean in, in a way, I think a lot of people look at Bitcoin and public blockchains as a way to like hide or to step out of the system when really, I think in reality, it's going to end up being that something that brings more honesty and accountability and accountability and, mm -hmm. to the world. But initially, it's been really good for drug dealers and, and uh, other criminals, right? Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> people don't understand it. <laughs> right. right? And, and there are projects that are created for that purpose. And I think they're actually gonna get crushed by regulation and- uh, How's it gonna impact like if China has a coin versus a, you know, the US government wants to do digital wallets, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you see with all of that? If China has a coin or, I mean, some some type of like government coin yeah. of some kind. And what's this deal with, I mean, how much are you reading about digital wallets that could be, you know, given out and, you know, this whole movement of don't use cash. Like, remember it was like only cash. Now we're going to go to places like don't use your cash, you know, <laughs> like yeah. it's a totally different thing. Well, it's like with COVID, you know, I mean, why waste a good opportunity to get rid of cash, right? So, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to push for digital and, you know, and stable coins, which I think uh, are growing exponentially. And let's right talk now. about that. Some very interested in stable coins. Uh -huh. um, so let's talk about those. Yeah. Well, stable coins is basically, you know, so if we had, let's say you had some dollars mm -hmm. uh, and you set those dollars aside and then you create a digital token that represents ownership in those, in those dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you own this token, uh, you can redeem it at any time for those dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's kind of like the old goldsmith thing, right? You know, like a gold standard. Yeah. 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 So it's like a dollar standard. Right. So are you saying everybody could have their own coin? Technically or? everybody could. I mean, I mean, with the technology, you can tokenize anything and that's, that's the direction that we're going. We'll probably end up seeing tokenized real estate, tokenized everything. Well, well let's mm -hmm. think about this. Like 
how many dollars actually exist in print versus how many dollars actually exist in computer screen? It's about 3% cash, right. 97% it, digital. Right. Wow. I mean, mm -hmm. so there's things you have to understand with that, like fractionalized banking, that Absolutely. you can have the same dollar loaned out multiple times that has a minimum reserve requirement, but then you know that it can just keep being lent because it keeps going through the system. So if, if, yeah. if Logan gets a loan, mm -hmm. he then puts that money in the bank to, you know, and then that money gets lent again, if I borrow it, and then I'm going to use the bank, right? And then you're going to, and they just have to have a certain amount on reserve. So that's why we have one of the reasons why we have way more money in circulation way more and, debt. De and mm -hmm. debt than we actually have cash. But the other thing is how much are they actually printing? Because how do you add 3 trillion mm -hmm. to an economy aye, aye, in aye. paper? Mm -hmm. That's not, yeah, you aye. can't print three, tr like to count from one to a trillion at one second per number, mm -hmm takes like a half a million years. <laughs> so think about that. How are you going to print that amount of money? It's not printed. Right. It's just, it can't be added yeah. to screens. Right. 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 Well, here's something that's really unique and cool about stable coins. So I think everyone kind of is focusing on the things that go up in value because really everyone, which is speculation. I mean, let's face a gambler, it, right? So on, let's yeah. face it, it's, it's the new, it's the 49ers, you know, going out there to, to, to get gold. And one in 12 people did okay. And 11 out of 12 either died or didn't get anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that this is the, the new gold rush. And so people are, Absolutely. you know, they, they got, oh, everybody's going there. They go put their money in it and they get super excited about it, but they don't know enough about it. They can't really explain it. And that's why I didn't do it the first time around. And right. like, look, I have a business that I make money with and that I enjoy. And so... Did I have FOMO? You bet. It infiltrated my dreams. It tried <laughs> to tear my joy away from me. I fought it off and I, I found happiness again, you know? <laughs> you came to the other side. That's good. That's but stablecoin is something that I'm, you know, you and I have been right. talking about. That's why I wanted you to come on and yeah. really describe this. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as I think what really allows, you know, what really sets a stablecoin apart. I mean, you, you brought up uh, fractional reserve banking. Right. Right. We know that the banks don't have a dollar for every dollar that they say they have. I think anyone should right. just go ask to get all the money they have in the bank out. And if it's over a certain amount, there's no chance you're going to get that. They don't even right. have that amount of the bank. They even have like some banks is like, you can take out 3000 of cash and that's their cap yeah, they want per to day. Know what's going on. And if you mm -hmm. take more than a certain amount, they actually have you fill out forms. Um, cause I had these clients that they were having an event and I said, you know, you should consider with your event because I was going to guest speak at this event and you know, mm -hmm. they, 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 they teach people how to speak and they teach people how to, you know, understand body language and all this. And I said, just put, put a, a case of a hundred thousand dollars out in the lobby of the event of actual money and mm -hmm. watch people's body language as they, as they walk by it and as they and see what happens. And when they went to get that money out, they had to go multiple times. They had to fill out forms. It was like, Hey, you're now on a watch list. Congratulations. Cause you <laughs> wanted your own cash. My <laughs> own money. Thank you. There are multiple different, stable coins. Some are more well regulated than others. And maybe you would trust some more than others. What but, do you like more? Um, I personally like uh, USD coin. Um, they are audited monthly. And it is, uh, you can see that they, they, they put that out, you can see that. And um, they actually do have a lot of people that um, are high up that have good connections. Um, I mean, there's some Goldman Sachs connections. So usually they uh, you know, they're, they're not going to let bad things happen unless they make a lot of money on it. So, um, so USD right. coin. Well, you, you is know that, that a good thing? I, I mean, Goldman Sachs is basically like saying the living devil, but, uh, you know, <laughs> oh. but the thing is they do own a lot of what's going on right. in this world. Right. So they I guess is that connected. a good thing for them to be involved? Because I guess in my mind when I'm thinking, I don't know much about stable coin and the little that I know about cryptocurrency is like you said earlier, mm -hmm. it's like this is supposed to be a way to get out of the traditional system, sure. kind of be not necessarily anti government, but like mm -hmm. let's develop a new system that operates differently than the system that we sure. have. That is well, kind and of let's be clear, people. like the Federal Reserve isn't government. Yes. Right. Yeah. It, so like it makes us feel like it's government, but it's actually central banking, which is privatized. Right. Which is insane. Yeah. Right. But right. so, but yeah, I mean, I th trusting I, the government. I think doesn't the real innovation like is going to come from the the public being able to see what's going on. I don't think we're really going to be able to step out and just kind of in the shadows do whatever we want. 
I think that's just not going to be allowed. And that may not be a world that we want to live in. Right. Right. Absolutely. But to bring more trust and honesty to the system and, you know, more trust in government, if they did things more visibly mm -hmm. and we could see that publicly and we know that what they're doing with the cash is what they're really doing with the cash, that that's going to be the true innovation here. Yeah, because the, the whole purpose behind transparency is accountability. When exactly. there's transparency, you can hold people accountable to living mm -hmm. ethically and making you know, good decisions for other well, people in the world. You can have consequences, essentially. And consequences, right. yeah. So I guess for me, one question that I have, and some of our viewers might have, is with all of this innovation, I don't know, for, first of all, let me go back. Will you do a quick summary between stablecoin mm -hmm. and crypto? Just like sure. a quick overview. Okay. So we're going to have, so let's use Ethereum, for example. Okay. So it's a public blockchain. Ethereum is the native token mm -hmm. that people can move around and they need it in order to, to uh, transact on the Ethereum blockchain. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. But on that same chain, I can create a separate token like USDC, which is actually run on the Ethereum blockchain. Okay. And so I actually need Ether to move my USDC around, but it's just a tiny amount. Okay. So it's kind of like, so I have the internet and I, I can build on the internet. Mm -hmm. I have Ethereum right. and I can build on Ethereum and then I can have this token. Uh -huh. Okay, so I can. It's like it's like a lot of technology companies, even social media, like Twitter or another company, might have the same bones that they're working mm. with for that to operate. But it looks like it's Twitter, but they're using like a certain software program mm -hmm. that okay. they then customize. But it's the basic bones or rails that mm -hmm. something would be created on. Yeah. But maybe that I mean, this is not true, but. Maybe Instagram's using the same thing, mm -hmm. or maybe another exactly. company's using the same thing. Just kind of like we have a, a CRM, right, for customer relations, mm -hmm. and so other companies might have that CRM. But you can build different plugins. You could build like it's still our company that they're seeing the email from. So it's kind of the underlying technology that supports the mm -hmm. utilization. Is how now Absolutely. if I'm wrong on any of that, you know, call me out. No, 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 that's right. Yeah. So I think that's. I mean, that's and that's why eventually we're going to see all kinds of things built on top of. Blockchain. So all coin is on is basically blockchain, right? Is using blockchain or one type of version of it for it to use to for it to transact or for it to be held. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're gonna we're gonna have a blockchain and then we're gonna have what we need in order to transact right. on that blockchain. Ethereum. And then we right. can create whatever we can build all kinds of stuff on top of it. So it's like a it's like a DBA. Have you ever heard of a DBA? Mm -hmm. So you have like a company. You could have like Wealth Labs as a company. We could have a DBA called Chief of Staff Stolba Inc., right? And, and it's like under the name says Chief of Staff Stolba, but it's actually the underlying company's Wealth Labs. Yeah. So if you watch any movie, you'll see at the very beginning, you'll say, it'll say like, uh, you know, Century 21 Fox, and it might say a News Corp company or something like that. Hmm. And so it's, you know, it's yeah, all working together. It's almost together. like the example that comes to mind as you're sharing that is when sometimes you buy a ticket and you think you're flying Delta, but it's through an, like another airline yeah. that's providing the service. Kind of similar, yeah, another yeah. example. Yeah, so we've given a bunch of different examples <laughs> that either confused or clarified, totally. we'll have to see. Yeah. So essentially you need to have um, a crypto coin or mm -hmm. like a coin in order to have stable coin. You need both. You can't have one yeah, or the other. Yeah, they work together. And, and mm -hmm. you're going to need, you don't have, so if I go out and I buy USDC, the stable coin, I don't have to own Ethereum mm -hmm. to transact in that, even though it's on the Ethereum blockchain. Mm -hmm. It'll just take a fee in stable coin when I send that. So if I send a thousand dollars to Garrett and USDC, they might take 15 cents in, in a fee for doing that transaction. Mm -hmm. Sweet. So it's kind of like a wire. Yeah. But so a lot gonna, cheaper. It's, I think, I mean, these stable coins are really going to end up being the way that you want money to be now. Right. And I think eventually that everyone's just going to hold uh, a stable coin of some kind and probably not even realize that they have one. You yeah, know? I, I saw this, this talk mm -hmm. long ago, like, and if I would have acted again there, it was, it, it was under ten dollars at the time for Bitcoin. Okay. Are you getting FOMO? No, I was. I just was. I, just was no, 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 I, I was cool with that one. I was a little bit more agitated myself with the one with Logan. Mm -hmm. um, but the the guy that gave the presentation on it he goes, "Look, there's nine properties of money." He says, "But when you're using blockchain and crypto, there's eleven. It's actually it's easier." it's better. And I was like, he made a very compelling argument. Right. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you what those two extra things were, but maybe <laughs> right. Logan but can, but different. it was like, that makes total sense. Yeah. You know? well, let's talk about some of the major advantages that I see. I mean, no, when I, when you first hear about stable coins, I mean, everyone's all into the crypto part of it, the Bitcoin, the Ethereum, they, 
they want to buy it because it's going to go up in value, right? And then you might turn around and ask yourself, why would I own a stable coin? What's the point of that? Right? Mm -hmm. What's the point of that? Well, I see a couple advantages to holding stable coins. Number one, I see it as, you know, a way that I can hold um, my money in a way that will allow me to avoid, well, really as a hedge. If there's ever any, any type of liquidity issues within a banking system, mm -hmm. I have the ability to transact in dollars still, okay? And I'm holding a digital token that's fully reserved and audited monthly, okay? Mm -hmm. Seems so like I, a good thing. So if, let's say I keep six months of my reserves in stable coins, right? And then we have banking issues. Everyone's waiting for FDI, FDIC to step in and save the day, right? Meanwhile, I can transact still. You know, I can use my dollar denominated stable coins and jump on opportunities, right? I can pay my bills still. I can send money to China. I can pay people over there. I mean, mm -hmm. there's true value in having a digital form of my dollars because it's so easy to move, mm -hmm. okay? So I think there's, for people that have cash, and an, another way of hedging and protecting yourself is actually holding a form of stable coin, I believe. How do you protect yourself? Like, you know, my, one of my co-authors, uh, Nick Halleck, when the early days of Bitcoin, he had mm -hmm. people, you know, that hacked and stole it. And I know mm -hmm. that there's like sure. wallets and there's other things like, how do you hold your stable coin? That's a great question. Well, there's, there's a couple of different ways you can hold it. Um, you can hold it similar to the way that you could hold your Bitcoin. You could hold it on a hardware wallet of some kind. You could just keep it. Can you just tell me I need to update my hardware wallet? I did. I tell me did. what that's about. Yeah. Well, every once in a while, well, if you do want to use it, um, we, you're going to need to update it first. And since, you know, I figure you're not really tech, technologically what's the uh, word? Advanced. savvy, advanced. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that I might I'm technologically need challenged, but I married I a woman who is less mind. savvy in technology than me. So I can <laughs> impress one person. Okay. Like I can restart her computer. She's like, how did it start working? I'm like, <laughs> I can plug it in if you she just forgot. Like unplug yeah, like it, I'm count to 10, plug it back <laughs> yeah. in. You're like, look, honey, I'm a genius. Right. Boom. <laughs> I just don't want Hi, that Google. phone call. <laughs> I don't want that phone call from Garrett. Like, you know what? I just lost my Bitcoin. You know, and I just, you know, uh, let's just make sure that doesn't happen. All right. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> so there's lots of ways. So there, you can hold it that way or, or you can just keep it with, I mean, with a stable coin, it's really, all, I mean, it's the value really comes from the redeemer too. I mean, it's, it's only as good as the person promising to redeem it for a dollar. Right. Mm -hmm. So honestly, I can just keep it as close as possible to the redeemer. So USDC was all is, uh, in partnership with Coinbase and circle, um, both really big companies. Most yeah, people Coin, are, I, are I did my transactions Coinbase. on Coinbase. Yeah. So, I mean, keeping it with Coinbase, keeping it with circle, um, and they're going to quickly redeem those. Um, so honestly, I could just keep it there. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the first one to redeem wins if there's ever a run, right. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, let's keep it close to the redeemer. Mm -hmm. um, or you can, I mean, it might if there was any ever uh, lawsuit or anything where that caused, like, say, Coinbase that they couldn't transact for a period of time, it might might be beneficial for me to keep some of them, maybe on a hardware mm -hmm. wallet of some kind. So maybe both, right? I yeah. think would probably be a good idea. So you just keep hedging, essentially. Yeah, yeah protecting. Yourself. You know, I, I got to the point where. You know, when we do our events, part of it, we want people to have a minimum, a minimum of six months liquidity for their personal expenses. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, one month in cash in the safe, mm -hmm. one month of coin in the safe. Mm -hmm. And I'm on at least one month of some type of, you know, exactly. and not when I'm saying coin, I was talking like gold or silver. Mm -hmm. But now I'm talking about another one of this type of coin sure. as well, you know, because yeah. I think it's important because first thing is cash in the safe, because if you ever had an identity theft issue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or you ever have a, a banking run and you know look the savings and loan debacle wasn't that long ago mm -hmm. right and i i personally was pretty scared in 2008 because fdic got tapped out i mean yep. you know they just they, nothing like printing more money <laughs> you know it saves the day so which is just basically a way to make your money sick so it has it's like mm -hmm. has less power you know mm -hmm. because you keep watering it down. It's like soup. If you keep adding water to it, it loses some of the flavor. And that's what we've been doing to money for mm -hmm. quite some time, which is, is one form of theft essentially, because you're taking mm -hmm. from someone else that did what they were supposed to do. They're using this measurement. And this is what's really important. Money and math are just not the same thing. Like math is useful to understand basic pieces of money, but because of inflation, lowering the value of that money over time, that's different than math. Because a seven, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand years ago is a seven today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in money, a seven today might feel like three dollars and fifty cents.
10 years from now. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, this is part of the reason that you're seeing a rise towards cryptocurrency, because right. if they're saying, hey, we're not going to issue more than this, and we'll just fractionalize it, not as far as lending, but that you could just can get 0. 0.0001 of a coin in order to do that transaction, right. rather than adding more to the pot, mm -hmm. right? The confusing thing is because there's so many tokens, and there's so many things out there, what's going to hold value long term. And so stable coin right. is kind of this notion of, well, holding value more than trying to get meteoric rise because you mm -hmm. pick the one that takes off. Right. It sounds like they named the coin very intentionally stable, stable. coin. Yeah, it makes you right. feel good, right? It that sounds like the company I named Garrett Gunderson LLC. <laughs> if you wonder who's running that company, it's hard mm. to tell, you know? <laughs> There's a couple other really neat advantages here, and I think you'll find also with the stable coins, and it really has to do with the inefficient inefficiencies in the markets, that you can actually generate a pretty good yield right now. Mm. And so right now with USDC and other stable coins, you're generating anywhere between eight to 11% annual yield on your cash. Holy moly. Which is actually pretty good. And actually I will come down over time, I think as more and more stable coins um, become available. So here's my question for you. What's that? Can I, I wonder if my captive would allow me to put my cash in the stable coin because it's sitting literally in cash right now. It's a great question. You have to figure that one out. Yeah. That'd uh, be nice. It would be nice. So, but right now, I think there, there's a great opportunity to earn some yield. So I think a lot of people in a low interest or almost negative interest rate environment, I think it's going to naturally over time drive people into the stable coins. And I think where that yield's really coming from, I think it's coming from two major places. Number one is coming from institutions that, and traders that take advantage of arbitrage opportunities, number one. So I can't, it takes me forever to move my dollars from one exchange to another if they're regular dollars. Mm -hmm. With USDC, I can... I can move them quickly, and so they're they're generating a way more than eight percent. Is there a good tutorial on how to do that? <laughs> this is, you oh, go I, to the I used to do it way easy. back in the early days, and now yeah. computers have jumped in and made it way too that's hard. That's awesome. But, uh, <laughs> so that's one opportunity. I think a lot of people as well, like businesses in foreign countries, and I mean, just doing business in U.S. dollars can be very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, the regul, you know, the regulations and everything around it is hard. So if I can start a business and I'm only dealing in tokens. It's totally different. Well, look, when I, this is very place that we're sitting, mm -hmm. I bought it with cash value of my life insurance policy. Okay. Here's a couple of issues. One, I was going to Burning Man the day I closed on this. So I was not in communication, even though I said I was going to do a nine day close. So I was with limited phone service, trying to get the loan working with my life insurance agent. Mm -hmm. Then it was Labor Day, and so everybody was closed, including banks on that day. So now it's a Tuesday. I finally, you know, get everything ordered so it's supposed to um, get leave on Wednesday overnight, get to me on Thursday, and then I close on Friday. Very, like, important I close on Friday because that's the end of the, of the term. Well, that overnight, there was some major issue with the flight for whichever overnight company, so it didn't take off from New Jersey. So <laughs> finally gets to Utah and then they have another issue where it doesn't get off the flight till the next day. And so I was just like, and then when I had to go, I had to go to my bank, it was a lot of money and they were wanting to put a hold on it. But I was like, look at my history here. Look at the transaction. So I had to right. go meet with the manager, mm -hmm. talk to them. Plus it was inside of a trust. So I, I, there was all these signals. So it was like, it was fairly complicated, exactly. even though it was relatively fast considering the amount of cash we're dealing with. But in this, much easier. Much, much there's easier. No, there's no worries about whether it's ex accepted or exactly. wired or held or whatever. It's really, that's what I said. I mean, it's really going to make money what you want it to be. What you what remember. You it to what did I say early on that I had a problem with Bitcoin? I'm like, the transactional value is not there. It's only a storage value that's highly speculative. Yeah. But this has obviously solved that issue substantially yeah. and what you saw in the future for it. Exactly. How widely accepted is Stablecoin? Um, well, they just, Circle just made a partnership with Visa. So USDC, mm. so it's growing uh, very, very fast. That's good because if it was Discover, I'm like, I don't know, you know, like <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> people, <laughs> diners guard, you know, like. <laughs> so it's going to be very, very easy, I think, in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and so, in the future, it may not even be that. I mean, it'll just be easier and easier for you to move around your USDC and and pay for things, and it's, mm -hmm. and so it'll just be easier and easier over time. So. And you can currently do it domestically and internationally is what I hear you saying. Yeah, you can send it anywhere. I mean, it's okay. just as fast as I could send it to you. I could send it to, ch to China or whatever. So okay. Ch and so even if I don't have stable coin, like we can do a transaction together, right? Yeah, I could. Well, I'd, you would just get a wallet and I'd cash. send it to you. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey, here's, here's a question. So 
Mm. We've got <clears throat> fiduciary responsibility for people who are an investment advisor. Okay. Are they allowed to talk about this stuff? Like I used to have a series, I, I passed my series 65, I had series six and 63. Mm -hmm. I don't manage assets and money. I help people improve their cash flow. I help mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. get clear about what they want to do. So that stuff didn't seem to be that useful, but you know, like who can talk about this and who's not allowed to talk about this? What kind of regulation do they have on this to give people? Cause you're saying, Hey, you might be able to get eight to 11%, <laughs> you know, potentially putting in there. So are they considering this investment, not investment? Have they tried to create so regulation? I think they're so far behind. I mean, they're probably just barely getting to the point where, you know, maybe their clients are asking about Bitcoin and I just remember the tax frenzy, right? Like when people were like, how, how do we handle tax? Because mm -hmm. when you came in and spoke, I mean, people got, you know, I think it was about a 200% return over about four months. And, you know, they're like, I think I'm going to just cash out what I put in and leave the rest. Yeah. And what's the tax ramifications? And people were in, in panic. And yeah, <laughs> I have two wallets, not just one. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. So I took money. I took payment from a client in, in uh, Bitcoin. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, let's make sure that we can hold on to it. And yeah. Let's make sure that, you know, <laughs> so. well, I want to make one more point on the stable coin before we move on, but I think it really comes down to people. I mean, people always think, why would I buy this when this could go up in value? Why would I buy a stable coin? I think there is actually, if you think about it, there is a potential for, a, for appreciation in a stable coin. Now it may be short term and it's really due to if everyone is trying to, if the demand for stable coins is greater than supply, mm -hmm. Um, it can go over a dollar temporarily, okay? Mm -hmm. So if there ever was any type of liquidity crisis or anything like that, we have foreign countries that have debt in dollars, they need to make payments, they wanna hurry and buy those, or we have just people wanting to protect themselves from inflation in other countries, right? So mm -hmm. they'll flee to the dollar. And so could I see my dollar stable coin going for a dollar five or more and, and maybe trading there consistently over a period of time? Absolutely, hmm. right? Because And, number, and also, my, could a digital version of a dollar be worth more than a non-digital version of the dollar? Could the utility of it give it more value? I mean, think about we the fact that dollars were ever invented in the first place is emperor's new clothes. <laughs> yeah, it's like, this paper is worth more than this paper. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we agree to it. It makes sense that it could go there, go in yeah. that direction. Well, and it has. I mean, I've seen it trade above a dollar for a period of time. And I mean, it's always a function of how aggressive the buyers are and how aggressive the sellers are mm -hmm. at a certain period of time. What's the market cap on stablecoin right now? Do you know? Well, just USDC alone has passed $3 billion, and it's done it super fast. Um, and, and I think it was within, I mean, it was like 500% five, growth or something in a mm -hmm. year. Um, and there's several other stable coins, but um, I tend to lean towards the ones that um, are run by the people um, that tend to make the most, the, the rules. The decisions, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good point. Good Amanda point. really loves those. She just <laughs> always likes to hear about that, right? Yeah. You can't beat favorite. them, you join them, you know, type of thing. Yeah. So, so do you, could you explain blockchain yet versus cryptocurrency versus a coin? Versus well, using and the that's, system. that brings up a good point. There are a lot of layers to it because I think sometimes it's convoluted. Like when you talk about um, a cryptocurrency, it's automatically connected to the blockchain, but the mm -hmm. blockchain has its like own set of potential. Um, and because there's, know, there's, there's, there's have nothing to do with cryptocurrency, the blockchain could be used. Yes, for it's it's a separate system. Other, you know, outside of cryptocurrency. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think a simple way to think of it is we have multiple. There's multiple blockchains. There's multiple protocols that are people are trying. To, they want them to mm -hmm. be successful. But it's kind of like we have one internet, right? Mm -hmm. We have one internet right now, and nobody even realized that you know maybe in the '90s there's actually more than one. You know, and there mm -hmm. was a big battle for. Which one's going to be the one? Are there going to be multiple internets that everyone's using? You guys, you know, AOL, you guys remember AOL and some of these other. Yeah, ones. I love seeing AOL emails. Uh, yeah. My wife still has a Yahoo. <laughs> and I'm always like, babe, come on. Get with get the with Gmail the world. She's got a Gmail one now, but she still uses it. Plus, it has her maiden name in it. And I'm like, that's just, come on, we've been married for 18 years, Stolba. She's not 18. quite committed yet. She's huh? like, I don't know how this thing's going to take. You know, we'll see. I'm like her Bitcoin. She's like, I think it's going to appreciate and be good, but I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, I mean, ultimately, I think we do we do trend towards one. One of these are going to win. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, nobody wants to be figuring, why do we need to figure out how to get on to multiple blockchains when we can just have one public blockchain where we can see what the government's doing, where they can see what we're doing, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And uh, so for, I think that's just the direction we'll ultimately trend. And uh, stable coins are gonna be a big, big player. So whether Bitcoin goes to $250 or 250,000, 
uh, stable coins will be running on one of them or multiples of them. And uh, I think uh, if you're going to put a lot of money or you're going to want to get some exposure to crypto, um, we're going to do so in stable coins. Maybe we generate some yield with it. Um, and then we keep some of it set aside. And if we want to speculate on the t on the actual Bitcoin or Ethereum, or th we really need to understand that uh, number one is the speculation. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you need to do it the proper way. I kind of feel How like. How do you properly speculate? Oh, it's what um, what advice do you have for people? Because I think sometimes when you kind of get sucked in this vortex of cryptocurrency, mm. it's like you just go with the current and you're like down the river and you right. don't even realize what you've gotten yourself into. And it's mm -hmm. not like what Garrett talks about is it's not a part of the investor DNA of the person because they right. haven't researched it. They don't know the ins and outs of it. So for a person that's starting out and they're trying to figure out how to understand this new okay. system, how do you properly speculate? Well, number one, you got to recognize that you are speculating, right? Mm -hmm. And that it can go to, to zero. So that you always start with base one. So I'm going to buy a certain amount of, of this coin that I'm willing to go to, to zero. lose. Yeah. Okay. But number two, I mean, you, then you, I know automatically from, because I've been there, you tell yourself, well, I won't make a lot of money if it, if it goes up. So I'm going to do maybe a little bit more than that, which you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. So the strategy long term, you really have to take a trend following approach. If you're not familiar with that, that's what you have to do. You know, I'm going to buy a little bit. If it goes up, I'm going to buy a little bit more. If it goes up, I'm going to buy a little bit more. And so you're going to add to your position as it goes in your favor. We don't do the opposite. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to, I can, I can establish a position as it works out, but then I have a trailing stop loss, which I know Garrett's mm -hmm. talked about That's before. It's a good reminder. So, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't even know what the stop loss is, but that's, you really have to take a trend following approach and you have to, it has to be not emotional, right? You can't get, they call it, don't get married to your position. Don't get married to your investments. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to get some exposure to it. And if they want, if they want to make a bubble out of this, I want to ride it, but I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to follow it. It shouldn't dictate your life is basically yeah. the thing. And ultimately still, but if people are economically independent, they have more permission to consider speculation. Mm -hmm. the, I, that's the thing that so many people are not economically independent. Most people watching these videos, most people in society are not in that position um, because there was an article out a while ago where it was like, 90 plus percent of people don't have four hundred dollars yeah. in savings you know so like everyone is it that I, high maybe i at mean at one time it was 60 some percent didn't have a thousand dollars that they could access within 24 hours i'll find i'll find the article yeah. and we can link to it in the in the video but just scare most, the piss out of us <laughs> most people are not in that position to mm. have extra cash to then begin this process of speculating and and right and that's where it's dangerous because we don't want this to become a lottery syndrome mm -hmm. where it's like hey you know i'm going to do this and i'm going to get where i need to go because in that place we don't consider value creation as the main tenant mm -hmm. but the thing is if value creation is at our core where we figure out how do we add more value, serve people, solve problems, discover who we are, develop our gifts, bring those gifts to the world. Like that's the key. That's the driver. Then if you want to make money on your money mm -hmm. and you're passionate and inspired and excited about these things, like Logan enjoys this study. Mm -hmm. It's something that he wants to do. It's great. Like, it's almost like I look at that speculation, like a hobby that can really pay off. Sure. Like for me, I'm hoping that's comedy for me. I thought it was just going to be a hobby. It looks like I'm actually going to be doing that. And uh, hopefully it's not just a hobby, Stoba, you know, but, but that's the, that's how I kind of look at it. When it replaces who we are, when it becomes everything that we know, when it becomes all of our hopes and dreams, that's no different than that lottery ticket at that point. Mm -hmm. Maybe it has a little higher probability of paying off, but probably not as high as most people think because right. the fear and greed become the thing that start to drive things. A mm -hmm. fear of missing out, as we mentioned before, mm -hmm. greed, I've got to have more, and then making irrational emotional decisions right. because you got to have more in it to think that you're going to be having this payoff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was kind of the gift that I was given, even though I would have had 25 grand turn into $700,000. The reality was oh. it allowed <laughs> me to really consider like, what am I here for? What am I doing? And that was right. speculation mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. could have paid off. The thing is that's not the you know that's not something like i don't think about it anymore i admit i was 
very upset with myself for a minute. I felt it when you just said it and it wasn't even my money. <laughs> right. But I've been given this, I've been given gifts that allow me to really add value in the world. And what I want to do is create stability long term. And that's why stable coin is very appealing to me because I'll, if I'm going to speculate, I'm going to speculate in comedy. I'm going to speculate in my business where I have way more influence, I can course correct and I can see the outcome because I met some people that did extraordinarily well with Bitcoin, but when it came to the basics of how to live life, they were still so young and confused and not sure what to do. And it was, it was very much like talking to a lottery winner, but then there's other people that, you know, like Logan studies cash flow banking inside and out and knew so much about it. Then he goes and studies this, like he, he is fascinated by these arenas and has a gift to really look at it. Mm -hmm. So it's part of investor DNA for you, mm -hmm. right? Like investor DNA being your values, being your competencies, being the drivers, and you can put your focus there. A lot of people don't put their focus there. The greed takes them there. Exactly. The fear takes them there. And they couldn't describe it. They wouldn't know why it would work or why it wouldn't work. And the worst thing that can happen to some of those people is they actually make it work one time accidentally mm -hmm. because now they've confused luck with skill. And I did that early on, mm -hmm. okay? $25,000 investment with my brother-in-law. He gave me back $50,000 three months later because he did real estate. I knew nothing about the transaction. I never saw the property. I didn't see the documents. I was basically someone I trusted. Then uh, my buddy Joel brings me a deal. He's like, hey, if you could finance this house, my buddy's gonna lose it. It was in Vegas in like 2002. And so I owned it for a couple of years, leased it to this guy. He got his credit improved, got a job, bought it back. I walked away with 90 grand, no money out of my pocket. So I was an expert. I was an expert, Stolba. Had nothing really to do with the outcome of either of those things. So why not go buy 100 real estate properties because I'm Midas and it's gonna turn to gold. And that's, the, that's the mindset that I worry about is that they yeah. start confusing skill and luck. And look, even the most skillful people might have some luck, but you know, some of the best investors, they're consistently saying, how do I mitigate risk? How do I manage risk? And we've had this faulty notion that, hey, if someone's wealthy, it's because they're good at taking risk. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. They're right. really good at managing risk. Exactly. And yes, there are the exceptions where someone took a massive amount of risk and it paid off. It happened to be the perfect timing and whatever came together. But that's the exception to the rule, not the rule. Mm -hmm. You know, and I want people to be really careful about that because they might read an article about someone living in the basement of their friend's house and, you know, risking it all. But at the same time, <laughs> they lost their marriage. At the same time, they were extraordinarily stressed. And now all of a sudden they have a whole bunch of money and the next venture just gobbles that up because they thought that they were Midas because they happen to have a stroke of, of luck and thought it was a stroke of genius. Mm -hmm. I love it. So any, anything else you'd say about stable coin, crypto, um, you know, any, anything that you think is important for people to know? Um, no, I mean, just to know, I mean, it is here to stay. It will, I think it's going to yeah. make the world a better place. Ultimately, I think the oh. interwebs are still here, right? <laughs> so they stayed. <laughs> But I do honestly, I do believe it is a great way to protect yourself. Um, it's an alternative way to hedge yourself, maybe get a little bit of yield on some of it. And, uh, you know, I don't know that anyone is is pumping stable coins right now, you know, but I'm a big believer in keeping your money safe, mm -hmm. keeping it available and then investing when the opportunities come along that are right for you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if, the, if Bitcoin wants to crash and I am holding stable coins, I might transfer some of them over or maybe I'll take some of that yield that I'm earning mm -hmm. and use that cash flow to start buying it. And if I lose that cash flow, then, you know, I only lost that, but I didn't lose my principal. But uh, I think it's definitely something we're studying and under, uh, understanding. So look into it. Cool. How's your yeah. FOMO? How are you doing? I'm feeling okay. Okay. Feeling good. okay. Life yeah. is still good. Yeah. Good things ahead. I do have, before we end this, I do have a couple of clarifying questions or not. Yeah, clarifying questions, but um, you said this a while ago about how there might be more coin added. So part of the thing that I do know about Bitcoin is there's a cap on it. There's only so many available. So mm -hmm. did they determine that from the onset or do they say, oh, we're going to add more later? So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it feels a little bit um, volatile in some ways when they're like, right. there's this cap, but then more coins could be added. And can you contribute to that yeah. a little well, bit? I mean, it's, it's, it's determined from the very beginning, from the people that designed the program, mm -hmm. that's what they decided it was going to be. It's going to be 21 million, you know, what, for whatever reason it is. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why we see these big price swings. It's, mm -hmm. it's called, you know, if you can manipulate the supply. So if I have big dollars, 
I can hoard the supply. It's just like they, what you know. You hear that they used to do that with diamonds, right? In order because there's so many diamonds, they buy these. They could. Yep. The then they, they control, they control the that whole. Yep. I think it's the, the same beers. things. Yep. Exactly. So I mean, when there's such a small supply, they can totally manipulate the price. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, if I want to pump it or if I want to, I mean, it's it's just. But it, to answer your question, yeah. yes, they decide that from the beginning. Okay. And uh, limited supply, I think, can lead to big bubbles. Um, but uh, to some people, that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. I guess. So how is that? So how is that different from you know like the Federal Reserve saying like we're going to pump twenty three trillion dollars mm-hmm. you know into society? How is that different if a you know if a coin company, for the lack of mm-hmm. better terminology, says we have a limited a number, but now mm-hmm. we're going to add more to that? Yeah, how does I, is that inflation as well? So let me let me say how I would say it, and then I'd love your opinion. Okay. But I, I see like what the Federal Reserve does is like go, hey world, we're going to increase the limit on your credit card. Listen, here's your credit card. Mm-hmm. You haven't earned it. You haven't done the work for it. Mm-hmm. We're just going to increase that limit, mm-hmm. right? This other one, I guess you could buy it on credit, which is how the Federal Reserve would. It, but, but if you pay cash, it's actually the representation of the cash and the value of that exchange at that moment mm-hmm. versus something that was borrowed and relent out. Mm-hmm. But the Federal Reserve, it's borrowed and relent out because I mean, I, I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole, but basically. Our money is borrowed from the Federal Reserve. Now, the Federal Reserve rate is pretty, pretty is it still at nothing? Is it still? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. sure it is, yeah. So, so there, there's not an interest on that right now. But how insane is it that there's a Federal Reserve rate mm-hmm. for money? Well, I think, I mean, how crazy is it in the first place that the government's borrowing money that's just created out of nothing anyway? That's just paper, not even paper. It's now just computer screens and, and banks. I mean... I know this is probably upsetting you, Stoba, because I know how you get around this. Because you're like, why does it have to be this way? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's and it and it. This is this is the frustration that we still see with cronyism, right? Where we have corporations funding things in the government and the government doing things because the corporations want power. And so, is it in the best interest of the people? No, but it might be for the shareholder but not really because it was done through corruption. Mm -hmm. And so this is why so many people have disdain for politics or why people that start researching the Federal Reserve start getting very frustrated about how it was created and what it means and how it works and how how we see a massive wealth gap where there's very few people that control massive amounts of money. And I'm here to tell you, you could go and list all the people you think are the wealthiest people in the world and they don't Mm -hmm. touch the people that own the central banks. Mm -hmm. The central bank people have way more money because it's basically the money supply that they have. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was very confusing for me thinking, well, what are they thinking about, you know, Bitcoin? But who knows? Like, like Logan said, he goes, you don't even know. Maybe they had something to do with it. You know, right. you don't know, depending on which conspiracy or whatever it is. But mm-hmm. but this is why money is only a representation of value. Bitcoin is only a representation of value. We choose based upon what we're willing to exchange for what that value is. But what we've got to get clear about is people are the only thing that are intrinsically valuable or living things for that matter, whether that's plants or animals. And I know with my hair and saying this, I just sound like a freaking hippie. But the reality is all that was used for was a method of exchange. And if cryptocurrency becomes a more efficient transparent method of exchange why wouldn't we move towards that because we moved towards money at one time which is just some made up shit. just yep. here you go yeah and that's that's how i feel about it i don't know that i have a, much of an opinion on it though Stella. <laughs> not, you know? not very much at all huh? any other questions you've got well did you have anything to say in response to that oh yeah let's give him a shot um man you said so much i'm trying to figure out where to where to begin I know. <laughs> yeah no, I, I think, I mean, we got to understand too, I think, you know, sure, the Federal Reserve can come out with all this money and, and, and try to pump up the banks with cash, but it's only going to enter circulation if the banks are willing to lend it, right? Mm-hmm. So I think we got to, I'd look at crypto in two ways. I think I see two scenarios. I see it either pumps to the moon and we see this long-term bubble, but we, of course you got to know that what fuels long-term bubbles, mm-hmm. just like what fueled, what fueled hype. The, what, well, not, that could fuel a short-term bubble. Yeah, okay. short-term, long-term. Long-term, I mean, go to the real estate Supply market. and demand, I guess, essentially. What fueled the real estate market? Remember when they were giving them loans away for nothing? Right. I mean, credit. Credit fuels big bubbles. Easy Total. money, right? So guess what I'm seeing right now in the crypto market? I'm seeing the framework being built out where people can actually take their Bitcoin, lend or use it as collateral 
and borrow money against so you're seeing that. The cre- that's, wow, that's a good point. I'm seeing credit. That's a great point. I'm seeing credit being made available very easily. For that's this. a big distinction. Hype, short-term bubble, borrowing, and credit, big, long-term big-term term term bubble, exactly. right? Long-term bubble, which we've seen so, over and over. And, and by the way, we're in that because people don't purchase things on purchase price anymore. They, bur- they purchase it on payment. So the lower the interest rate, which let me just point this out because this will get you fired up. <laughs> Do we Imagine when you go to the bank and they tell you, hey, we'll give you a quarter of a percent for putting money in this money market or savings account. Mm-hmm. So if you put a hundred dollars, they're like, cool, we'll give you 25 cents for the year. Oh, wow. But so- if you look at their loans, they're like, hey, right now you can get a loan on your home for 3%. Mm-hmm. So they're getting $3 for the hundred dollars, right? So they're, they, they get to keep $2 and 75 cents. So let's put that in the term of you're a landlord and you own a piece of real estate mm-hmm. and you can buy that real estate right now or, or rent it or however you want to look at it. And you could get that for 25 cents per month, but you get to turn around and sell that for $3. So let's look at it this way, 250 bucks per month, mm-hmm. but you get to turn around and rent it or sell it for $3,000 per month. Look at the interest rate on that Stolba. What's the interest rate on that? That's um, four, eight, that's like 1,200%. My math might be off, but I believe it's 1,200%. 1,200%. They don't even have to speculate or gamble. They're not as worried about cryptocurrency because they're in usury. And and I'm a little frustrated How about that, to be here? honest. How did we get here? How did we get to this Because now point? the Federal Reserve has such a low interest rate, so they can access our money for next to nothing. Just like, why did oil go to zero? Because it was like, you there was nowhere to store it when people didn't drive for a while. Mm-hmm. Supply and demand. Mm-hmm. And so people in, are being trained, hey, 5% is expensive, but 3% is cheap because they're looking at what they're paying, not what they're earning. Mm-hmm. Right. And so that's why, like, go to any war, any place in the world and banks have the biggest buildings. They don't even have a product. They don't even give you a toaster when they burn you anymore. <laughs> they don't even, I mean, at least you get a lollipop so they know that you're a, a sucker, sucker, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know what's coming. And, uh, and, and and the thing is, like... Or I, the, sometimes the suckers are called dum-dums. Right, ah! because they just really want you to know, Stolba. <laughs> they really want you to know yeah. just how this works. But they have rooms for their money. I don't have a room for my money, mm-hmm. right? They've got rooms you can't even go in. I don't even know, why is their building so big? I go into the little tiny lobby. There's always stuff above that. What the hell is that? It's simply, they make the rules of the money game mm-hmm. and everyone else is trying to accumulate and speculate and they're mm-hmm. trying to create cash flow. And when they tell you it takes someone else's money to make money, <laughs> it's your money, not theirs, mm-hmm. right? When they tell you high risk equals high return, you take the risk, they get the return because yeah. if they screw it up, our tax dollars bail them out. Mm-hmm. So. Should we be frustrated? Yes. What's the answer? We've got to start listening to ourselves and figure out what we can do to add value in this world instead of thinking that, you know, we just got to go trade our time for money and go get a loan because we can't afford to have the house that we want that we're told that we need because that way we can feel more valuable and we can be an impressive to other people. And the the answer here comes down to the individuals getting out of this consumeristic condition that's about consumption and get into a condition that's about service and helping other people and adding value. And great, be paid for that and be paid very well for that because the more that comes through you, the more you can create. Like I was thinking about Would you say, you know, would you see Mother Teresa's pictures and stuff? Does she look wealthy? No. Not really. But she did want to eradicate poverty, right? And she did want to, like, help people in orphanages. But you know how much money flowed through her? Mm -hmm. She flew in private jets. I don't really fly in private jets. You know, I just Mm -hmm. fly commercial. Yeah. And she flew private because her mission was so powerful Mm -hmm. that money flowed through her. And everyone else is taught to have money stop when it gets to you. Because you never know if you're going to have enough and if you're going to be okay. And you just got to rely on a bank account. And then you go get a small interest rate, pay more for that. And you fund a retirement plan that funds companies that are part of these that are the part of cronyism mm-hmm. because you're told, oh, it's always going to go up. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the, the, we are absolutely being told a lie. And so when those people don't want you to understand what Logan's talking about, they're going to do that through fear, through confusion, through uncertainty. And, and the reality is, I don't know all the answers. I just know that each person has their own answer mm-hmm. of what they can contribute to this world if they're willing to listen. Mm-hmm. Not to the news, not to social media, but to listen to themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I think just one thing I want to re- reiterate from what you said is um, I love that concept of letting money flow through you. Don't be the mm-hmm. dam where money stops. 
you know, do the work. Have you went to, and swam in the Great Salt Lake? To open it and let it flow through you, you know? Have you gone to the Great Salt Lake? I've been there, here? but I haven't swam does it, it. Does it seem like a place you'd want to build a house? No. Does it smell good? No. Right, there's because, lots of because there's no movement. It's mm -hmm. stale. Right. The Amazon River, think of all the growth in the Amazon. Mm -hmm. Think about all the life around that river. Think about all the fresh water that flows into the ocean because it's flowing mm -hmm. instead of stopping. Yeah. Stopping is what we're told out of fear. Flow is when we find who we are. And so hopefully these other things give you a sense of where you can utilize money and more efficiently and effectively where you don't right. just rely upon an institution that's that's making a killing off of you mm -hmm. but instead these are giving you tools to start to buck that system a little bit so that you know like i i ideally don't want to use any banks in the future with my legacy because we could finance everything ourselves and we can you know we could get a better deal for our heirs but they still have to pay something so they're responsible and we can actually earn a, a little bit of uh, money that would be a lot more than what the bank would pay us because we cut out the middleman. These institutions are the middleman. Mm -hmm. I feel like what we're trying to do with blockchain is cut out the middleman. And, and as we do that, the efficiency is going to increase, the price is going to go down, and all of a sudden we're going to have a much better structure. Mm -hmm. And, and you never thought I would say that, Logan. No, no. <laughs> and it seems like the I'm just slow and old, according well, to my kids. The last time we spoke kids. about crypto, I mean, we mm -hmm. peaked. So just, you know, people may want to know. Yeah, that. this is time to sell. You know, this is the time to, to get that out fast <laughs> just cash out <laughs> go to <laughs> whatever yeah i think my hope for even though there's so much for my for me to learn and understanding mm. crypto and the blockchain and the potential of it i think the thing that i get excited most is the potential for a more ethical system absolutely and that is something that i can get behind that is something that i can advocate mm -hmm. for and i think that's why it's so important for all of us to begin understanding our investor dna and start researching this a little bit because like you said it's not going anywhere so eventually it's going to be a part of all of our investor dna where we want to be a part of a system that we understand and we know how to operate in and we can advocate for a more ethical system because it does feel like the institutions, I know banks are businesses and um, they have this system that is totally set up to work in their advantage. But when interest rates are as low as they are now and they're going and charging people seven, eight, nine, ten percent, mm -hmm. and they're not transferring that over to people to, you know, to allow them to access funds to grow or get through this difficult time, it just it feels very unethical that right. they would take advantage of people like that. And I understand it's a business, but it's not a business that is for the majority of the people. It's mm -hmm. for a select few that, um, you know, people get, you know, the, it's for a few people get the advantage of the system. And that's the part that uh, I get really riled up about because mm -hmm. I think ultimately when it comes to money, we want money to work for us so we can live an express life so we can show people the gifts that we have and money's not always required for that but it is a portion of it it is know? efficient it is it is effective it, and it opens up doors let's just be right. honest like when you have money it opens up doors to opportunities it's connections to coaches and counselors and people to help you get to where you're going or you know to have the cabin or the trailer imagine or, me without all the counseling <clears throat> and coaches be scary aye, aye. no i mean <laughs> geez. you know but i just I guess that's the the part of money that is important to me right. is like helping people unlock what is inside of them mm -hmm. so we can well have said. um so we can have people living in their full potential you know that i think that's a sad thing when i see people standing on the corner asking for money or in a tough spot and they're just living paycheck to paycheck it's wow there's so much potential locked up there Potentially, I guess not. Not that they need money to unlock it, but it is a piece of the story, and but I, I feel support, called to because that. Because the goal is where we collaborate mm -hmm. and where we co-create, yeah. and where we contribute. Mm -hmm. And it is nice that money is an effective measure when we don't know someone mm -hmm. to be able to employ their services because they could do something more efficiently than us, so that we could focus on what we do best. I mean, mm -hmm. your expense is someone else's income, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. this notion that expenses are somehow bad or wrong or we got to reduce them. It's so rudimentary for people like I just did this reaction videos with Susie Ehrman and Dave Ramsey and it, her videos particularly <laughs> grabbed my attention this is going, because she just said the, the, the whole thing was like with so many job losses and 
40 million people out of work. What would you tell them? Like, and it was like sound financial concepts to sit on the screen. She goes, I told you eight years ago, have eight months of savings. I'm like, holy cow. That's like, that is the worst thing ever, right? Someone's actually asking for support and she's letting you know that she's smarter than you mm -hmm. and she's in her house in the Bahamas. And then yeah. you know, nothing it, better than shame. Like I'm in right. trouble. Let me just shame you. Like into when you it. don't have a job reducing expenses. Okay. I guess it, it pro it, it helps sustain a little bit while you deplete savings or have to borrow but that is not the answer mm -hmm. like the answer is you've got and she says be strong i'm like you know what makes you strong be vulnerable let mm -hmm. people know that you're struggling and get advice and work on yourself each day you know don't mm -hmm. sit and worry that doesn't help out um you know it's it's we've got to cultivate who we are mm -hmm. and we've lost that because we think that we're not worthy or good enough or we think that you know, who am I to, to have this or, you know, or, Hey, if I'm in, uh, other people are suffering, this is just the way that it is. And we get defeated because we think that we can't handle pain mm -hmm. because we think that we're not capable because of what something happened when we were a kid or what someone said, or we watched the news or whatever it might be. And the reality is we're capable of a whole heck of a lot more than we give ourselves credit for. And so if this is hard to understand what Ethereum and Bitcoin or stablecoin is like, continue to learn if that's something that interests you. You know, if you're trying to speculate this, we're not a speculation channel. That's not really what we're about. I like the way that Logan talked about if you do speculate, this is the format and formula because I do really like that type of formula. But uh, there's always more to learn. And I think it's always about being open, mm -hmm. not learned, mm -hmm. right? But learn the things that are going to matter most, which I think begin with emotional intelligence and your most important skill sets and your gifts, and then continue to understand money and the new forms of money because it is how we exchange with one another. And whether you like it or not, if you don't understand it, it's going to limit your potential to do the work that you want to do in this world. Mm -hmm. And there's some people that do everything they can to avoid it or not have it. And what they do is they limit the value they provide. So, all right, we've had our tr uh, rants. Anything from you no, here, Logan? No, I'm just a, you know, I'm just a big believer in what you said. Invest mm -hmm. in yourself first. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you really don't want what you invest in to be a distraction or take away from what you do best. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something I've learned from Garrett. Extremely grateful for mm -hmm. him in, in my life. And so he's been a great blessing to me. And so just thank you for the opportunity to be here. Well, thanks for, and, thanks for uh, coming up so to the podcast studio, driving up, taking the time yeah, and, uh, and giving us, uh, I learned today. I know you learned mm -hmm. today Yeah, definitely. and you're not even in FOMO really. No. Yeah. yeah I, I want to build yet. on something you said too, like make decisions and, um, learn about the things that are going to help you build the future that you want to live mm -hmm. in and that you want your kids or your friends to be a part of like we can not forget that we are creators and so let's start building the skill set investing in the systems um, that will help us build the future that we want for ourselves and for many generations to come want to continue the path to be a better investor make sure that you're not losing money and taking too much risk well click here and learn about strengths vesting